Hi, and welcome back to the 10 square meter workshop. Today is the start of my next big project, a scratch-built CNC machine. Now regular viewers might be thinking, doesn't you already have a CNC machine? And yes I do. It's a commercial version, and with wood it works extremely well. But it struggles a bit with metals, aluminium, brass, and that's what I really want to cut too. Yes, it will do it, but it's all a bit marginal. So what I want is a purpose-built metal CNC machine. So let's get building. I could, of course, do a CNC conversion of my manual milling machine. I don't really want to do that. I still like to use it for manual purposes. In fact, the majority of jobs I would do manually. And I don't want the compromises that such a conversion would entail. This is my current CNC machine. It's an open source design, supplied in kit form by Oosnest. It uses polycarbonate rollers running on aluminium section for movement and uses 8mm threaded rod driven by a stepper motor for movement. This may be fine for wood, but we really need something a bit beefier for cutting metal. For the sliding part, linear rails are indicated. There's really two choices, the flat type like this, this is quite a small version, or the round like this. And I have chosen the latter because it fits my geometry better. Not sure if this is a good idea, there's very little data available. For actual movement, ball screws are indicated. This is a 16mm ball screw, so twice the thickness, four times the area of my current one. And as you can see, it's all made out of beefy material. There's recirculating balls inside of here. While waiting for materials to arrive, I made the spindle mounts. This was from Half Inch Alley. They came from that old mag tape. I've made so many parts from. It's been really good value. First step was to mill the bottom and two sides flat and square. They were then clamped on the rotary table and the hole cut out. taking slow ramped cuts because it's only two point clamped. The point of breakthrough, the inner bit now rotates separately. Moving the cutter out, I can now start cutting the top strap. With both sides cut, I shall finish off by hand. As I've said before, I'm not a purist. Mounted vertically as a pair, I can now put the clamping bolt holes in. Drilled and counterboard, they look like this. Flipped over, the bases were drilled 5mm for the 6mm mounting bolts. The holes were tapped 6mm with the top strap still in place. This acts as a tap guide so you get well aligned holes. The clamps are then separated and the bolts fitted. And here they are, fitted on the spindle. Firstly I'm going to make the z-axis and this is some of the parts I will be using. First step is to clamp it firmly in the mill and face off all the sides. This both finishes the outside and establishes the zero point. With the plate milled to size it's time to spot and drill the 38 holes needed in this plate. The DRO map was a little larger than normal for this. With all the holes centre drilled, I can follow up with a 5mm drill. Some for clearance, some for 6mm tapping. With the holes all drilled, 
some now need to be counterbored to take the cap head bolts. After counterboring, the holes that needed tapping were tapped 6mm using a follower. The plate was then flipped over and counterbores put on the other side. After putting a chamfer on the front and a bit of general cleaning up and deburring, the plate looks like this. The end of the plate was drilled and tapped to take the motor mounting plate. This will be machined later. The next step is to mount everything for a tri-fit. Going by the published dimensions, these should all be at the same height. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap. So I'll need to make a recess in the plate that attaches to allow for this to fit. There's not a great deal of room, so the motor mount ended up a bit more complicated than I would have liked. But there it is. The Z-axis plate is machined out in exactly the same way. The one difference is the surfacing you can see I've done. This is a half millimetre deep. It's a strange thing. According to the drawings there should be a one millimetre gap between the part that fits here and the plate, needing a shim. In practice it's about half a millimetre oversized. Something wrong with the drawings or the parts. With all the parts made it's time to try assembly. First come the spindle mounts because the bolts that hold these are covered by the rails. It's pretty tight in there. Next comes the rails, then the ball screw and finally the motor and spindle. It's a pretty solid beast. I can't detect any free play in it and I can turn the coupling by hand. But the true test will come later when I try running it. To test everything works I've thrown together a quick oscillator with switchable pulses and off she goes. It's only low speed at the moment but I want to make sure it steps okay. It's only operating at low speed that's good enough to check for any stiction. And it feels really smooth. Quick change of direction. Yep, looking good so far. Last step on the Z-axis is to fit a micro switch to detect the home position. So two holes were drilled and tapped three millimeters and the micro switch bolted to the frame. Well, that concludes the work on the Z-axis and I'm pretty pleased with it. What occurs to me, it was also work as a router table lift. Pretty precise, just dial in the height you want. Mm, but not for this one. Well, that's all for the Z-axis. Do the Y-axis next. See you then. Bye for now.